Hello everyone and welcome to June 3rd and it's the Wednesday following Pentecost Sunday, the ninth week of Ordinary Time. During this week the staff is offering reflection, reflections on what it means for us to be returning to Ordinary Time in our liturgical cycle. And since we've been sheltering in place during this time of the pandemic, we've actually traveled through the Lenten season, Holy Week, and the Easter season, which included the feasts of the Ascension and Pentecost. I've truly come to appreciate uh, the seasons of the liturgical year because they remind me that not every day is special. Uh, we move along in our daily routine, our daily lives, but at certain times during the year, the church invites us to special times of reflection and rituals and prayers and different experiences of faith. And as we move through the seasons of Advent and Christmas and then Lent and Holy Week and Easter, um, I kind of wonder how do those experiences and how they enrich us um, how do we allow those seasons to then energize us in our faith? And now as we return to ordinary times, um, how will we let what we've learned during those seasons kind of infuse um, how we see life? I want us to consider the word ordinary in a different way too. Let's not think of it so much as, you know, ho-hum, nothing too new under the sun. Um, but I looked it up and ordinary can also mean customary, belonging to the usual course of things, uh, belonging to a regular routine in our daily life. So here we are and we're fresh from Easter and Pentecost this past uh, Sunday. And we can ask, what did we learn during this season? And what does it teach us about how we as followers of Jesus, what does it look like in the ordinary times of life to be that follower of Jesus? What does the normal course of things look like? So as we think about that, I want to share a part of the first reading from today's scripture, which is, a second letter of Paul to Timothy, and here's a, an excerpt from that. For this reason I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. Do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. So a little context about this particular reading. Um, St. Paul was writing to Timothy, who initially was a student of his um, and then became a fellow missionary, a friend um, in the work of Jesus. And Paul is writing to Timothy from a prison cell. And it is considered the last letter that Paul wrote before he was martyred in Rome. And Paul consents that his time is, is running short and he wants to offer his love and encouragement to Timothy and, and all those who are following Christ. But as is usually the case with uh, St. Paul, he doesn't really try to sugarcoat it. For us. Um, he offers an important insight for all of us who, who follow Jesus. And he reminds Timothy, and all of us as well, that following Jesus is not always going to be easy. And he's trying to say to us, stay strong. Do not be timid. You are going to face hardships. That is to be expected but he's trying to advocate for endurance in the dailiness of life in following Jesus. So going back to that part of, that I mentioned before about 
what is considered the ordinary routine of being a follower of Jesus. And I think St. Paul helps us to see that it's going to need our commitment and dedication every day because we are going to face obstacles. And in case we weren't sure if we needed the power of the Easter season and the resurrection or the power of the Holy Spirit that we just experienced during Pentecost, we don't have to look too far to understand how much we need that power of Jesus, that power of the Spirit. Just think about what we are facing during these times. And if the pandemic of the past months hasn't been enough, then the heartbreak of the murder of George Floyd reminds us further of what is needed from those who follow Jesus. I, I find myself struggling to know how to respond to, to such a tragedy and struggling to take in what it means for the family of George Floyd to watch that video. And yet, as we have heard over the course of this week, such, such incidences um, have they've been happening for so long to people of color. But the difference is now that they're being filmed and I no longer have an excuse to, to look away. I think now more than ever, People who say that we follow Jesus must speak and act in a way that gives witness to what we heard in that reading from St. Paul. And I'm just going to reread that one line. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love. Our brothers and sisters around us, this country that is so broken, our world is counting on us to make good on who we say we are as followers of Jesus. That we are unafraid to be witnesses of love. To be unafraid to speak up. To be heard. To be seen to be unafraid to be missionaries of hope and courage. Will we be like the disciples on Pentecost, so infused with the power of the Spirit that they are released from huddling in fear with one another in the upper room? That they're infused with the Spirit that they go forth and speak boldly and passionately about how Jesus set a fire of love on the earth. And we are the ones who tend that flame. We are the ones who tend that flame. As we go through this week together, in these coming weeks together as we start to uh, think about coming back in person with one another, what it means to reopen, certainly as we continue to walk with one another as a country during all this time of division, all that we're seeing on the news, let us really pray for one another that we are infused in these ordinary days with extraordinary love and extraordinary courage and with extraordinary courage to stand up and be seen as followers of Jesus. I look forward to seeing you all soon in person. And until then, I wish you many blessings of peace.